Coming up on TechZilla, we've got a Windows 7 makeover, the 64-bit Windows driver secret, help for multi-room audio, AHCI, and a lot of comments from y'all on Cassandra's N800 upgrade. So grab the malt vinegar and soak down those chips, because TechZilla starts now. This episode of TechZilla is made possible by Gamefly. Go to Gamefly.com slash TechZilla for your free trial membership. GoDaddy and Jack Threads. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Welcome to TechZilla. Hands-on reviews the latest tech and how to make the most out of the gear you've already got. Whether you're a beginner or tech support for your friends and family, if you've got a question about tech or how it feels to sit on the Game of Thrones throne, we've got an answer for you. And if we don't, we'll track down someone who does. And it felt awesome. Normally, this is the part of the show awesome. where we, we start talking about the news, the events. We're going to talk about WonderCon in a second. But I have a question for everyone in the audience. It's a special question. It's going to make Veronica laugh. If you know a way to hide a grill in your home without your partner or spouse knowing, let us know. Just as be operable on a sort of small outside deck. Please, techzilla at revision3.com. Mm -hmm. WonderCon, Roger so brought fun. back the lovely sonic screwdriver, <laughs> apparently he could not find a hydro spanner. He's been you, waving it around to people all day. Did you get an award for the, for the, for the throne not picture? An, not an award so much, I got a swag bag, swag which I bag. haven't actually received yet because I had already left WonderCon when I got the tweet from the Game of Thrones Twitter account saying that I had won like a free swag bag for taking a you photo put a and bag tweeting of about stuff. it. So my friend Crystal, who was also there dressed as Tinkerbell, she is she picked it up for me and she's gonna give it to me next. We can show? Oh yeah, uh, she's up on the Game of Thrones Facebook page as well in her little Tinkerbell outfit looking very cute. Now I have yet to see the picture. I'm I look pretty, I have to say, it's one of my favorite pictures I've ever taken. Are, are you dressed as Veronica Belmont? Or it's just are you dressed me. As, okay. It's just me, but I, I, so I've read like the whole series card. and I'm obsessed with the show when mm -hmm. it comes out. I actually bought HBO, which is something I would never think I would do. And so I was definitely channeling, I was channeling Game of Thrones when I took the picture and I think it comes through. She thinks it comes I think through. So. I think it came through. You have probably never heard of Epsilon, but chances are they've heard of you. They're one of the biggest online marketing companies in the world. They run email blasts, excuse me, sophisticated, targeted, opt-in marketing for several of the biggest companies in the United States, Best Buy, Citibank, Disney, J.P. Morgan, um, Walgreens, TiVo. TiVo. Got the email from TiVo today. We could list names for the rest of the show. They reported last week that they'd suffered a breach and the email address and names of customers have been stolen. It's relatively benign data. It's an email address and your name, right? Um, it's not credit card numbers, but security folks suggest you keep an eye out for phishing attacks via email targeting you using on, on the services you obviously subscribe to. Yeah, I saw them reference a term which I hadn't really seen before, which mm -hmm. was spear phishing which yeah. means it's even more specifically targeted phishing scams because yeah. they have the names already and they know the email they address know associated. Veronica Belmont has right. a TiVo because they have this TiVo account, or at least So then they you... make like a fake TiVo email. This right. didn't happen to me. TiVo just emailed me saying that yeah. our, our names and email addresses were, were in danger. Mm -hmm. um, but they could potentially make like a fake TiVo email saying, Veronica Belmont, your TiVo account has been, you know, we have some suspicious charges, like click this link to fix your account information. And of course you click yeah. on that link and type in your name and password. No, right. no, 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 no. So be very cautious instead of clicking on links embedded in emails, you know, open up a fresh browser window and type in the actual main URL for the website yourself or give them a call. See if there really is anything going on with your account before you yeah. click on any emails. I think one of the worst things about this is it's just going to mean that somebody out there, somebody hacks their way into one of the largest collections of active email addresses in the world. Well, this is not the first time this has happened. I mean, it seems right. like it happens every couple of years and new companies get, get affected by right. it. So so you just have to follow the same rules all the time, the ones that we're mentioning right now. Well, you mean like phishing attacks, not necessarily Epsilon being Not, I, I mean, not things at that level, right. but there have been situations where companies that have large amounts of, of email, email addresses, addresses stored <laughs> that work for a lot of other companies get yeah. compromised, and then this information gets out there. Don't click on the link. It comes in the email. That's all we're going to say. Exactly. And then Windows 8 will have a ribbon UI similar to the one found in Office. Hmm. That's the rumor surrounding a series of pictures floating around the web and uh, that Windows 8 will blend elements of Windows 7. Xbox 360, Office, maybe a little connect situation going on there, yeah. and possibly even Windows Phone 7. Uh, we found the pics up on PCWorld.com. 
It's an interesting idea. Yeah. Uh, I think mostly I'm sitting there like, wow, I'm just getting used to Windows 7 and Windows 8 might be coming. Are we coming, are we coming on the age when we might have a unified UI across the board for uh, devices like that? All Microsoft products? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. I'm not holding my breath. I actually, what I do want to find, though, interesting. Is, there's a couple of companies that have actually come out with user interfaces for like Windows Media Center using the Kinect. I'm trying to get all the pieces together because like the one that just came out, I couldn't even get this. I think it got like, you know, just, I think it's just, they released it and I think the site just got stomped on by everybody trying to download it. Uh, but I like the idea of controlling Windows Media Center by waving. That'd be pretty fun. Finally getting my, you know. That would be pretty fun. What was the minority report on? From the best defense is a good offense department or at least one big honking collection of patents. While Google remains adamant that patent reform will benefit users in the U.S. economy as a whole, they're bidding $900 million for Nortel's patent portfolio, presumably to protect their open source interests or at least beat down threats against Android. Nortel's telecom patent collections is particularly noteworthy for OF, DMA, orthogonal frequency division, multiple access, and MIMO, multiple input, multiple output, which are critical to LTE mobile, not to mention Wi-Fi, and, and many, many, many other things. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And since it's hardly a 2011 episode of Texilla without some kind of tablet news, it looks like Sony will be dropping an Android 3.0 tablet later this year, possibly even PlayStation certified. We'll have to see. Uh, but in the meantime, let's talk 4G. Cody Anderson wrote in, Hi, Veronica, Robert, and Patrick. I will be moving to a new state soon and will need internet for school and personal use. Should I get a 4G hotspot like Samsung's 4G LTE mobile hotspot SCH LC11 from Verizon, or should I plan on getting internet from a normal service provider? Is 4G an option for heavy internet usage? Is 4G access truly unlimited, or is there some hidden cap like 3G, or is there a gigabyte cap like Comcast, like 250 gigabyte cap? Gigabit, gigabyte, gigabyte, gigabyte. gigabyte. Yeah. Um, I watch a lot of streaming video from Netflix, Hulu, Revision 3, as well as some other streaming sites, and I'm worried about hitting a cap quickly. Cody. <laughs> yes, uh, first thought, Cody, is that um, before you buy any 4G modem or router, you need to make sure there's 4G coverage in your area. Yeah. That's a big issue. Um, Don't laugh, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's just, it's not everywhere yet. Um, some 4G devices are 3G compatible, so they'll still work in all the areas, um, but they don't necessarily have that latest, fast service. <laughs> You'll get service. the older, slower speed. You're going to get the old slowness Yay. instead of the new hotness. Mm -hmm. um, but if you have a choice between dropping $60 a month on a cable modem or 3G, we'd recommend the cable modem. Um, seriously, the, uh, the short answer for your particular needs, no. Yeah, the long answer, by the way, is no, too, especially if you can only get Verizon 4G in your area. Verizon charges 50 bucks for 5 gigabytes for their mobile broadband. For 80 bucks, you can get 10 gigabytes. Every gigabyte after that is going to cost you another 10 bucks, which means my family's usage would blow through that cap in about 15 minutes. Uh, okay, I'm joking. It is a gloriously fast uh, 5 gigabytes that you're getting from Verizon. Sasha Sagan figured out that he could blow through the 5 gigabyte cap in 32 minutes back in December when he tested it pre-launch. Assuming that the network's a little slower as it gets populated, you're still talking about being able to blow through that 5 gigabyte cap in a few days quite easily. Um, live the dream, man. It's, 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 it's a fast system, but you know what? There's going to be a lot more people on it. And more importantly, you're going to go through 5 gigabytes really fast. My Sprint Overdrive 4G modem doesn't have a data cap. Um, it does when it drops back down to 3G and non-4G areas, um, but I'm, I'd bet dollars to donuts that Sprint will eventually cap that data plan. And while I love the megabit per second I get here in the Bay Area, it's two or three times as fast as 3G, um, there's no way I'd slop, slop, swap a megabit uh, for a cable for the like 15 megabits I get on the cable modem at home. Yeah, and before anyone else emails us, uh, yes, Verizon offers uncapped phone data, but using a phone for your home connection is kind of a pain in the patootie. And to cop a title from ComputerWorld.com, how long can Verizon Sprint offer unlimited plans? Um, judging from CTIA, sometime this summer for new Verizon phone signups, and probably sometime not too long <laughs> after that for Sprint. Yeah. By the way, I don't think the 3G caps are particularly hidden, Cody. Five gigabytes is pretty much standard. And personally, I wept when Sprint dropped unlimited data. Uh, basically, they followed AT&T and Verizon on their 3G data plans. It's interesting, though. I did remain sort of, of grandmothered in mm -hmm. under the my unlimited data cap on my original 3G contract. But then you're, you can't really upgrade hardware or upgrade 
um, to your services without breaking your grandmothered or grandfathered in unlimited data cap. Yeah, I like grandmothered. grandmothered grandfathered in is sexist. Um, but one thing we should kind of stay aware of is right. that perhaps because of this whole T-Mobile, AT&T thing going on, maybe in order to stay competitive and offer something the others don't, Sprint will hold on to that uncapped 4G. That would make me and my Sprint 4G modem very, very I don't know. They happy. need something. Definitely, Cody, search around your new home and see what your options are before signing up for any contract, especially if it's like two years long. Hey, for all you PC gearheads out there, we're having Lloyd Case back on the show in a couple weeks. We want you to send in your questions about graphics cards, PC gaming, and of course PC tweaking. Send your questions to techzilla at revision3.com with Lloyd Case in the subject line. Coming up next, we're going to have, well, viewer questions, including a little help with home, well, actually, not even home theater audio. We're going to talk about multiple zone audio. So if you have, Ooh. like, wiring up your entire home for audio. But nice. first, let's take a moment to thank one of our sponsors, Gamefly. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service. We're talking, like, 7,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. Plans start at just $15.95 a month, and if you're a Gamefly member, you can rent one to four games at a time to keep them for as long as you like. No late fees, no due dates, and shipping is always free. If you're done playing a game, send it back. Gamefly will send you the next available game in your list. And if you really like the game you've been playing, click Keep It on the Gamefly website. The game is yours at a discounted price. Gamefly will even have the case and manuals free of charge. And Techzilla fans score a 15-day free trial when they go to Gamefly.com slash Techzilla. Please support Techzilla by supporting our sponsors like Gamefly.com slash Techzilla. Wondering how Kansas City feels about getting Google's great big one gigabit per second fiber experiment? Tim writes in. <laughs> but seriously, I hope it's worth all the fanfare it's getting. Tim in Kansas City. Arjun in Houston says, hi guys, my family's going to be moving to a brand new house and we have wired all the bedrooms for in-wall speakers. Now we need to get the actual speakers. I started researching some options and I don't really know what to look for. There are four rooms and each room is wired for a stereo system, so eight speakers. What do you guys think? Please keep in mind that we just bought a house. Love the show. Thanks, Arjun in Houston. <sighs> um, if please keep in mind that we just bought a house is code for holy cow, we're paying off a mortgage for how many years? Let's not spend a lot of cash on those speakers. You might want to check out Polk Audio. RC85i. It's 150 bucks for a pair, not a single speaker, a pair, and they've gotten a lot of happy customer reviews on Newegg and Amazon. Something like four and a half stars after 90 reviews uh, on Amazon. That's that's people are pretty happy with those. I'm just trying to figure out how you would wire a subwoofer in with those. And if I were still living at home, I would want a, a cutoff switch on every single one of those so I could keep mom from waking me with massive morning dose of really loud music, especially during the sort of holiday season. There's just certain times when I don't want to hear jingle bells at freaking 103 <laughs> decibels. Um, just remember, though, you're going to need a multi-zone receiver with that. Uh, usually preamp outs with power amps for all those speakers. Preamp outs with selectable levels are nice if you're feeding rooms that aren't all the same size. Comes with nothing worse than having somebody in the little tiny bedroom in the corner getting the same amount of, mu of volume of, of decibels as somebody in a much larger room. Mm -hmm. You can use something like Denon's AVR890 for your home theater and run its preamp outputs to a couple low-cost power amps. But at this point, at that point, you've got like... Let's see, 150 times 4 is 600 plus another 500 for the amp, so let's call it about $1,000. Okay, or if you don't have the ability to wire your whole house, mm -hmm. you could get something like the Sono system and pay, the S5s are about $400 each. You could go with the S5s and then just wire the regular Sono system to your existing home theater setup and mm -hmm. use that as one of your zones. So that would be looking at like 1600 bucks. Right. But then you wouldn't have to wire your whole house. So if you don't want to do that or if you <laughs> don't have the ability to do that because you're in a rental situation, right. that might be a... But you still want to have like the sort of music in every room for the party situation? Music in every room you, or, or different music in different rooms at the same time or, or grouping really piss different off rooms your together. by turning on you right. know, yeah. pink at four in the morning. There you go. I mean, that, that's <laughs> another option. It's, it's more expensive, but right. I, I have found that the Sonos system itself is so easy to use that it makes up for some of that that price differential. Yeah, basically, you plug it into the wall, the wireless is built in, it mm -hmm. sends the music. Yeah, and, and then you can add new zones whenever you want just by getting a new unit. Will it play lossless audio files? Um, I've never tried lossless audio files. You know, I think it will. We will answer that question next Monday. Because it'll pay for it'll play from your your existing library. That's true. So I think it should. I think it will be fine. Which yeah. like I've never tried 
lossless files with the Sonos. Yeah, don't quote me on that. We'll have to look into it more, but I'm pretty sure that it will. We will have one on the show for next Monday. Yes, next question. Hi, guys. Love the show. On show 203, Robert mentioned that one of the things he enjoys is tracking down updated drivers for various hardware, etc. That sounds like something he would enjoy. A few months ago, I updated to Windows 7 64-bit Home Premium Edition. I cannot get two perfectly good pieces of hardware to work with Windows 7 64-bit because I cannot find drivers or a workaround for my HP LaserJet 1012 printer and my camera. Nanoscan Scanner Model 50 LIDE. One of you guys can help. I really am hesitant to buy hardware from companies who choose not to update drivers. Sincerely, Ray in NYC. Well, good news, Ray. Um, first off, Canon and HP are both good companies as far as updating drivers go. I know HP especially for, for a fact in my own personal experience. Yeah, I feel like I've, I've owned like 15-year-old printers from HP and you can yeah. still get drivers for operating well, systems. It's in their best interest to do so. Um, second, they both list a 64-bit Vista driver for your printer. Um, and this is the 64-bit Windows 7 driver secret. <laughs> yes. Try installing that in Windows 7. Um, they're very similar under the hood and they often work just fine. Um, if they didn't, we'd never have made it through Windows 7. Beta. It's true. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if the installer refuses to run under seven, try right-clicking on it and selecting troubleshoot compatibility on the drop-down menu. Um, that just might make the installer work. That's what I did often for the Windows 7 beta right. as well. This operating system is not, you know, compatible. Like, yes, it is. yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. Well, it's time now to thank one of our sponsors, GoDaddy. Your website visitors, prospects, and customers are wary of websites and online businesses that aren't what they claim to be, and worry that their personal and financial information might fall into the wrong hands. Turn your visitors' concerns into a competitive advantage with the ironclad protection of a GoDaddy.com secure certificate. And remember, you can download GoDaddy's free iPhone, Android, or BlackBerry app to order right from your phone, manage your current domains, and more. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for a list of all the amazing GoDaddy deals from Revision 3. Looks like it's time for another website we just can't get enough of. A website that we just can't stay away from because it's too useful, too funny, or just too darn irresistible. This week's pick, star.me. If there's a message you want to send to someone, but traditional email or tweets just seem too mundane, try out star.me. This site is a great way to send someone a little love, a little fun, or just something plain goofy. You start out with a basic deck of stars, and the more you send out or get, the more creative and funny stars get added to your inventory. You can connect your Twitter and Facebook profiles, so you can scroll through your contact list to pick who to send stars to, or you can just send one directly over email. Now don't go too star crazy. While some stars are unlimited, others have a finite amount that you can pass out, so choose wisely. You don't want to give out a coveted dog person star to someone who actually loves cats. After all, what a terrible waste. The site is still in closed beta right now, but if you want to try it out, enter the promo code VBSTARME to get into the site early. Plus, you'll automatically get the awesome sci-fi and fantasy stars, which I helped design. Kind of. Say Frank did all the hard work. Check it out now at star.me, and don't forget the promo code VBSTARME. Installing themes for Windows can be an awesome way to dress up your OS. Uh, while it might not do much in terms of adding features or functionality, it can help lessen the stress of having to look at your computer screen eight plus hours a day. And when we came across this Lifehacker post titled, A Loon is a Simple, Beautiful Theme for Windows 7, we had to share it with you. Here are the directions from the blog post. First, you want to install the Universal Theme Patcher. Um, it's included in the theme Download in the Tools folder. You may be asked to patch some files at this point. Um, I did, and then restarted the laptop afterwards. You want to Extract the RAR file into C colon backslash windows slash resources slash themes. The themes folder might be read only, so go into the resources folder first and uncheck read only under the properties menu. Change the permissions on the explorerframe.dll file, it's in your system32 folder, uh, so you own it, rename it, and then replace it. Restart Windows and then select the theme in the personalized menu. However, uh, this didn't seem to want to work for us on our janky little Cosmio here. Um, our recommendation, which a lot of commenters on the page said as well, is to download a free application called Custopack Tools from www.custopack.com. This application will let you download theme packs, install them, and then tweak them to your little heart's content. Um, Alune is actually one of the featured themes, so it's super easy to find. This is a great way to search for and install these themes without needing to worry about fiddling with uh, DLL files or patches or anything like that. Super easy, and it makes your machine look a lot more slick. Not bad. So I, I really love the final result of, mm -hmm. of getting the Alune theme on here. The only problem is the Lifehacker instructions didn't work for us. Right. 
And I think there's some steps missing in there. And I don't know if it's because this machine has weird permissions or if there's something wacky going on there, but it didn't immediately show up in the personalization menu when right. I tried to do it. Um, I, I noticed some other people were having that same issue. So I would just recommend using Custopack and just having it all done for you within the separate free application <laughs> without having to fiddle with a lot of stuff. Sometimes it's just better to find an app that does it for you. There's an app for that. <laughs> and it works better than doing it yourself. Speaking of which, Lifehacker, not only is there a new Lifehacker show here on Provision 3, but we're going to have one of the editors from Lifehacker on. Sweet! In, uh, either next week or the week after, we're still working on nice. that part. Nice. I'm excited. I'm a big Lifehacker fan. Me I'm too. My fanboy face on. Big time. It's time now to thank one of our sponsors, Jack Threads. Chances are you hate shopping for clothes. Luckily, if you're a guy, there's Jack Threads. It's a members only shopping club. It's online, so you never have to leave the house and you save a boatload of cash. Everyday Jack Thread serves up the hottest brands that are up to 80% off what you pay in the store. We're talking about stuff like Kid Robot, the hundreds of American apparel for way less than you can find anywhere else. Now, Jack Threads is a private club, but you're a friend of Techzilla, so we got the hookup for you. Just go to jackthreads.com slash T-E-K and you can become a member immediately, as in right now. Did we mention that it's free to join? Hit up jackthreads.com slash T-E-K and you'll instantly start saving without having to leave the house and you'll be helping to support Techzilla. Do me a favor, check out jackthreads.com slash T-E-K and get yourself some fine youth clothes. So a few shows back, we had a request for tablet recommendations from Cassandra, who wanted to upgrade from a Nokia N800. And like the champs you all are, you came through with your advice. Snow Shark wrote in telling us, I just watched episode 204, ironically, on my trusty Nokia N800. I think that's actually coincidentally. Um, I was interested <laughs> to note that you did not mention the Barnes & Noble Nook Color as a potential replacement for her N800. While it is nominally an e-book reader, the community, i.e. XDA, has made great strides in hacking the Nook to boot into Android. Since she has an N800, I'm assuming she is not afraid of the command line. Snow Shark. Yeah, that's a good point. Hmm. That's a nice little skinny little device. I wonder what the battery life is like on that. Um, it's probably, I would say, probably on par with the Kindle, if I remember correctly, though I think because the... Not when you're playing video. <laughs> no, yeah, that's a good point. Kindle kind of kills it for battery life, which is good. Um, Febriel sent us this. In episode 204, you talked about upgrades to the Nokia N800 and various alternatives to it. Well, I have the Nokia N810, and I'm happy with it, but need a speed and memory upgrade. I absolutely need the pull-out keyboard, and screen size doesn't matter. I know the N900 exists, but it costs the earth, and it has a phone capability, which I don't need. I don't need much in the way of apps, aside from some backwards capabilities with my N810, but some decent document editing editors and the like would be nice. Any ideas? Um, Tablets with a fold-out keyboard. How about a netbook? <laughs> <laughs> netbook? Or you could get a tablet and a Bluetooth keyboard. Um, or you could get a... I don't know. I mean, at that point, like, if you actually need to type and create documents, I, I gotta say, you either need to get an external Bluetooth keyboard yeah. that's compatible with your tablet or, you know, you need to get a netbook or a MacBook Air or something like that. I mean, partially it's because I touch type. I can touch type like 60, 80 words per minute. Mm -hmm. So trying to hunt and peck on yeah. the iPad to edit a document makes me want to weep. So I need to have a keyboard to actually be able to edit documents fast. Yeah. So I'm just thinking. Maybe a netbook. Plus, I don't think I've really it's seen a tablet with a fold-out keyboard these I days. I haven't seen that either. To my no that I recall, anyway. Maybe I saw yeah. one and it's totally like awesome. And I, oh, oh, there was the OQO. And JM in Alberta, Canada. Are they still around? I don't think so. That's a bit more critical of Cassandra's qualifications on what devices she would want. You write in in one of your recent shows, you were answering Cassandra from Queen's question about upgrading her N800. Her comment about not wanting anything proprietary, specifically Apple, made me laugh. I hate to break it to you, but anything we buy these days is proprietary. Whether it's a laptop, a Galaxy Pad, or the latest and greatest from BlackBerry. The hardware is proprietary to the company, and the OS running your device is also proprietary. For Apple, it's the iOS, Google owns Android, BlackBerry owns the copyright to both BlackBerry hardware and OS, so whether her beef was with one particular company holding the copyright you write to both hardware and OS, or just an innate distaste for Apple products. Either way, I thought it important to bring to your attention that everything is proprietary in one respect or another. So to really live with a distaste for proprietary products would mean you live a very meager lifestyle. No car, no cell phone, no craft dinner. JM in Alberta, Canada. 
harsh, man. And, and, and I, I think to some degree not entirely accurate. Yeah. Because there's a huge difference between buying into iOS and the way it sort of locks down, unless you're willing to jailbreak your hardware, um, iOS and the way it locks down your, your, your sort of software hardware relationship versus Android and it's relatively mm -hmm. open. Uh, uh, there's a big difference there for sure. I think um, my, my least favorite thing when it comes to being proprietary are connections. Right. And um, you know, charging ports and the like. <laughs> you know, if everything was mini USB or micro USB, I'd be a happy camper for 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 charging or connecting or transferring data. But it's not, and some are. Some are. Some are. I mean, a lot of devices take micro micro USB. What I'm finding frustrating is because, and I understand the EU's motivation for like, we're going to make everything micro USB and that's going to be the standard. And like I get where that's coming from and on some level I like it, but so many of the new devices require like 2,000 milliamps yeah. and unless you happen to have one of the very special USB connections on a very recent piece of hardware, um, you're going to end up carrying around this sort of like 2 amp USB charger. And yeah, well, the, the fact of know, the matter is it's just not it doesn't make sense almost for companies to do standardized ports and connections because they want you to keep buying the new charger <laughs> that only works with their device. They want right. you to keep upgrading to the new thing. It's a pain in the in the tush for us, but right. it makes sense for them financially, I guess. I just, I'm silly. just waiting for like every USB port and every device to magically overnight through the waving of someone's wand be become... Nice. That would be nice. Sorry, I thought you said something else. No, what do you think I said? <laughs> Finally, we got a question from Lucas all the way down in Rio de Janeiro, where we hope it is warm. Lucas asked us, hey guys, I recently assembled a brand new computer, installed Windows, and got it up and running with my shiny new SSD. After a day or two, a friend of mine suggested that I switch on AHCI mode for better performance. Except that every time I go into the BIOS and then enable AHCI, my PC won't go into Windows, but when I switch back to IDE mode, it works fine. Any idea what the problem might be? Lucas in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. I'll let you take this one. Okay. HCI, Advanced Host Controller Interface, is Intel's standards for the SATA bus interface. What this means to you as an end user is HCI lets you do really cool stuff like hot swap SATA drives or support native command queuing and hard drives. Unfortunately, <laughs> there's a downside to all of this, much like micro USB and charging. <laughs> you need to enable this on the motherboard before you install the operating oh, system. Oh, there it is. Dun, 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 there dun. it is. Cue the dramatic groundhog. If you leave the SATA controllers in something usually called legacy mode, the OS assumes you don't have HCI and installs legacy compatible drivers. To get around that, you need to do a clean install of Windows after you turn on HCI, or turn on HCI, do a clean install of Windows. And remember, you need to have at least Vista or higher since 8th XP or HP, as I like to say, while I have braces on my teeth. <laughs> Not a dip in my mouth, which is a really funny tweet I got. Seriously, turn on HCI and then s install uh, Windows Vista or Windows 7. I prefer Windows 7 because it has built-in HCI support. Windows XP does not. Yeah, and then you'll probably have better performance anyway on top of that. You know, I just, I, I, it makes me happy. There you go. All your problems will be solved, ever. You want us to keep the... <laughs> All of them. I'm All of so them. serious. Every last one. I promise. Relationship problems too? Definitely. Windows 7 solves marital problems. HCI, done. You heard it here. Yeah. You want us to keep delivering the best in technology news, help and how to? Well, we're going to need your help. We're going to need your emails, your video questions, comments, your suggestions. Fire them out to techzilla at revision3.com. Of course, that's not the only way to interact with us. Mm -mm. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash techzilla. Plus, you can reach all of us here on Twitter at techzilla, at Patrick Norton, at Veronica, and at Robert Heron. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Patrick Norton. I'm Veronica Belmont. Till next time, you've been watching Techzilla. Bye. Gazelle accepts more than 300,000 products from over 20 different electronics categories. Shipping is free on all items of value, and in most cases, they'll even send you a box to ship with. 
Also, for you green folks out there, Gazelle makes all the recycling partners adhere to some strict policies. No exports, no landfill policies, and a ton of data security standards. Gazelle is a great way to get cash to upgrade to the latest iPhone or Android phone. Just go to www.gazelle.com to learn more.